So let's begin our discussion for rational functions. Now, <coughs> your main rational function is the reciprocal function. Okay. Now, with your reciprocal function, it's, it does exactly what you would think it would do. If I had the squaring function, what did the squaring function do to your input values? It squared it. What did, what did the cubing function do? It would cube the input values. What do you think the reciprocal function does? It reciprocates. It does the reciprocal of the input values. So that's given by 1 over x. So if you understand that's what it is, and you see the pictures that I've given you already, let's fill out some t-tables for that. <coughs> so this is a rational function because it is a fraction, right? Think about the values that we can plug in here. If I plug in negative 2, what do you get out? Bless you. You get the reciprocal, which is negative 1 half. If I plug in negative 1, what do I get? I get the reciprocal, which is negative 1. What if I plug in negative 1 half? The reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2. Does that make sense? The reciprocal function takes any of your input values and it turns them upside down. What if I plug in 0? It's not no solution? Question mark. Yeah, question mark. You're, you're undefined. And we know that we're undefined because we've seen this stuff before with rational expressions. You can't have your denominator equal 0. This 0 right here is a restricted value for your original function, right? You can't plug it in there. Then you could go on, you could finish working on this t table, and you can plug in values like one half to get two, plug in one, you get one, plug in two, you get one half. You guys with me on that? <coughs> so if you've got your basic t table of values set up, I want you to graph them and see what kind of shape you make. So we have negative two and negative one half is right here. Negative one, negative one. Here's one half, and you're down here at two. So these are your key points. On the other side, you have 1 half, 2, 1, 1, 2 and 1 half. What if you did 3, what would you get? You'd get 1 third, then you'd get 1 fourth, and 1 fifth, and 1 sixth, and so on, right? As you go out further and further here on the x, these values are doing what? Closer to They will never cross over the x, go infinite to they, they will not be able to cross the x-axis, but they'll get closer and closer and closer to that, right? Why not? You tell me what number I could plug into 1 over x that equals 0. He's never going to equal 0. If I keep plugging in larger and larger numbers, this guy keeps getting what? Smaller and smaller and smaller, and he's and his distance between the graph and the x-axis will get smaller. They'll get closer and closer. But will they ever equal each other? No. Now we said here that when x equals 0, we are undefined. Now what that means to us is something called a <coughs> vertical asymptote. So there is this imaginary line right here that you cannot cross. This is what we call a vertical asymptote. It's a vertical asymptote. You cannot cross that guy. And notice what happens is your graph comes along here. As you're coming from the left, this guy gets closer and closer to zero. But when he gets closer to it, he starts to curve and open, and he, he goes down. So he's never, ever going to be able to cross that guy. Now, with our own inaccuracies and the thickness of our pens and pencils, <coughs> you guys see that it looks like we, we touched this guy, but he's not. Okay. And then on the other side, you have 
<coughs> you have this picture. Okay. This is what your reciprocal function looks like. The important points to know are these three points that we have right here and the three points that are on the other side right here, the negative 2, negative 1 half, negative 1, 1, negative 1, excuse me, and negative 1 half, negative 2. Those are the key points that you need to know. There is something else that we have going on here. Now, we don't have this for every reciprocal function, but for the main guys, we do. And notice we say we get closer and closer to the x-axis, but we don't get to include it, right? We don't hit that. So this guy right here is called the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now, here's what the horizontal asymptote does. The horizontal asymptote can be crossed. It is possible for you to cross that guy. What the horizontal asymptote does is that it describes for us what happens as we go out to positive or negative infinity. Okay. Sometimes we have functions that approach a particular value, like a number that you can grab onto, and then you end up with a horizontal <coughs> asymptote. So as the our x's increase, we see this black line gets closer and closer to zero, right? So he ends up with this horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And the same thing happens on the left side. This left part gets closer and closer to the x-axis without touching it. Okay. So as the x's get to positive or negative... Be, how can it, if it has an infinite number of, of numbers to go to replace x with, how can it ever be with a zero and such? It doesn't. Oh, oh. You said they could cross the horizontal. How can it there will be some examples that we do where you have things like this on the outsides, but in the middle, you kind of cross down there. <coughs> you can do weird things where you cross in the middle, but yet you still end up with a horizontal asymptote. A great example of this, something for you to um, graph, is check out f of x is equal to the sine of x divided by x. We talked about that sine curve yesterday, how it just kind of oscillates, it goes back and forth. If I put this guy divided by x, even though sine of x is going to bounce between negative 1 and 1, what's going to happen here is x gets larger and larger. But why don't the, x, why don't the x's cancel each other out? Why don't the x's cancel each other out? Yeah. That's, that's a good question. If I were to write Do these x's cancel each other out? No. One's inside of a square, one's inside of a function, and one is not, right? So the sine x is a right, and think about outside of <coughs> Right, I want you to think about it. If you did cancel these out, what do you have? Sine. No, you, sine have, a, you have a sin. Yeah, because you don't have a sine of anything. That's a sin. Yeah. Don't do that. Some people will do this. I think that's okay, but don't, don't, don't. Now let's see, you know, this is me drawing it by hand and you can see how it matches up with the original guy right here. What do you guys think? Know your key points? And then if we know the key points, you know what we can do here? We can shift this guy up, down, left, right, stretch, compress. How exciting. I know you're excited. I can see it in your eyes. Yeah. Now, do you guys notice any type of symmetry exhibited by the reciprocal function? No. What type of symmetry do you see? Origin. I see origin symmetry. If I take this guy right here and I turn him <coughs> upside down, it looks exactly the same, except now the rotting's upside down. Right? And here's how you can tell you have that origin symmetry. The ordered pairs that I have here, like 2 and 1 half, or 1, 1, if you were to do the negative of both of those coordinates, you come over here and you have negative 1, negative 1, and you have this point, which is negative 2, negative 1 half. That's how you know you've got origin symmetry. Okay. 